Kix 105, good morning. It's the Maryland in the Morning Show. And once again, we are here with CHI St. Luke's Health Memorial. And now we are joined uh, by Dr. George Fedone, somebody I've known for quite a while now. I, would, I don't venture to say exactly how many years. But, uh, of course, he's uh, one of the founding partners of the Children's Clinic of Lufkin, Chief of Pediatrics at St. Luke's Health Memorial Lufkin since 1994, and also former Chief of Medical Staff 2014 to 2016. Welcome in. Good to have you in. It's good to be here. It's uh, rare that I do a radio interview, but I know glad to be here in any tent, any chance I can uh, have to uh, spear you. I'm going to give it a go because you always make fun of my white hair. So your, your uh, white hair and your height, I think, are the two things. A lack I like. of height and plenty of white hair. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Because I'm beyond my pediatric years, so I know that you can't get You're back. You're never beyond, beyond your pediatric years, Danny. <laughs> Ask your wife and your kids. Boy, you got that right. Uh, so yeah, let's let's kind of let's kind of paint a picture here. Uh, let, let's go back because this is kind of all new to me when I saw the explanations of exactly how this all came into being that I didn't realize this all like started eight years ago. So let's go back eight years ago where the kind of the seed was planted, the spark was started and you take it from there. So it was a little over eight years ago. Um, I had a thought that it'd be great to have Texas Children's Hospital here in the form of a NICU. Uh-huh. So I presented the idea to the board and at that time, there was a meeting that was held in our office where we held uh, both medical staff uh, chiefs, the chief nursing officers, the CEOs, and those decision makers from Memorial and Woodland Heights in our office. Right. And we had a neonatologist from Alexandria, Louisiana, that reported that he had done an epidemiologic survey and found that Lufkin could support a NICU. We had enough deliveries. So we posited to both administrations, maybe you could partner together to do one, or if not, maybe both do a NICU. Uh, Woodland Heights, um, uh, upon hearing the information, did further research, and their NICU, I think, started December of 2013. Right. And now, finally, Texas Children's Hospital is here, and we're very excited to finally have them here from a dream to reality. So in the eight years that have gone by since that meeting with the, uh, the gentleman from Alexandria to uh, have there been, has it been like a roller coaster ride? Have there been ups and downs along the way? It was first an idea. Yeah. Then we heard it's coming. Then there was a little delay. Then we heard it's coming again. And just as administrations and hospitals go, we had to get everything. There's a lot of moving parts to an organization as big as CHI and as big as Texas Children's Hospital. And it has been uh, slow in coming, right. but now that it's coming, it can't get here fast enough. And we're just, as I said, excited that it's here. It's, uh, it is perennial, perennially rated uh, one of the top 10 children's hospitals in the country. I think 2019 to 20, they were rated number three in the country, number one in Texas. And so they are formidable. They're going to bring state-of-the-art equipment, staff, uh, and ancillary personnel equipment uh, that is going to be putting Lufkin in a position that very few communities our size will enjoy with regard to level of services deliverable to the youngest citizens of your listening area. You know, let's kind of go ahead and touch, I guess, expand a little bit more on that because, I mean, you're definitely touching on basically what my next points were going to be, next questions are going to be. But, I mean, Texas Children's Hospital, I mean, as you mentioned, they're – reputation that precedes them. And so somebody that comes into the uh, NICU unit here locally, you're going to be able to tap into the minds there as well, correct? That's right. So they're going to be providing the staff that will be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're going to have neonatologists, nurse practitioners, nurses, respiratory therapists, physical therapists, and so on. And those personnel will be delivering the same level of care in a level two environment. There, th- there are four levels of nurseries. Level one is the regular nursery that everybody knows about when they think of a newborn nursery. Okay. Level four is the highest level nursery. That's where post heart transplant babies and liver transplant babies go. Level three is where babies that need uh, several days of oxygen might be on a ventilator. Level two is sort of the the mama chair. It is it is just before a level three, and you'll need a little bit more care than a level one. Maybe a baby is breathing fast, doesn't quite need to be on a ventilator, but they're sick or they have low blood sugar, or they have a high bilirubin, or they may act like they're infected. They're not normal babies, but they need help. 
and we will enjoy the services of the best children's hospital in the state being uh, there in our backyard. No travel being required. It's going to be right here, and they're going to be delivering care as good as in Houston, as, as the biggest cities in the country. So here we are two days past the actual opening of this unit now, of the, the opening of this. So how does this feel for you eight years after just the conversations that you had? So I feel immensely proud of the organizations that have had the vision to come together to bring two large systems, CHI, National System, Texas Children's Hospital, a statewide system, again, ranked number one in the state, to come together and deliver the services again in our backyard. It, what it, it, it is not about how I feel, it's how every one of us should feel that we have this in our backyard. Imagine if you were gonna, this is the Frazier and Ali of, <laughs> of, uh, of neonatology. Uh -huh. This is it, uh, and, and we've struck gold. And the, the gold is gonna be the care that, that this community is gonna receive via Texas Jones Hospital, again, in our backyard. Everybody to date that has needed these services has to drive. And Texas Jones Hospital has opened a campus in the Woodlands. Uh -huh. And probably the, a significant percentage of the babies that will go from, from here, some babies will start here and actually have to go for further care, a higher level of care, level three or four care. They may go to the Tex Jones Woodlands campus, or they may go downtown. But the vast majority of babies will actually be able to stay here. So it makes me, it makes me happy that a dream that I've had for a long time comes to fruition again to bring the level of care that we are now going to have to East Texas. I, I would say finally, but it's it's better now yeah. than than never, and so. Um, years and years ago, almost 40 years ago, I graduated college and I played tennis at the University of Texas. And I remember if you played somebody better than you, you always played up. Sure. Having Texas Children's here, we're all going to be playing up to this game. Having somebody that's that high is going to positively influence everybody around us. We're all going to be stepping up our game. And so the ripple effect of their presence will be a higher level of care and a better self-awareness about the higher level of care that we're going to be delivering to, again, to the smallest members of our of our community. Knowing what I know about tennis in colleges and high schools, they usually have, you know, they, they, they rate you as far as your seeds. All right, our, this is our number one team. This is our number two. Where did you rate? Uh, I played intramurals. So I played. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I played intramurals. Uh, we were number one doubles in intramural for four years really? while I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a short little guy that... <laughs> I appreciate well, it, Danny. Quick, I'm sure, yeah. And I didn't have white hair, <laughs> which you would really be upset about. <laughs> now, when you, you were saying, you know, eight years ago when the study was done to see that you could definitely uh, have a, a NICU unit here, well, how many babies do you think will yeah. like to be treated as a result? So at the time of the research, it was around 1,600 deliveries uh, in a calendar year. Okay. And you figure about 10% of those are 160 newborns would go or visit a NICU. And if the average length of stay were about two and a half days, that's 320 days worth of NICU. That's basically one a day, just about. And so if if you have some stay a little bit longer than you did, all you'd need was a population of about six to eight, and ours is an eight-bed NICU. And so we would expect that when it's mature to be um, to be at capacity often. And so, uh, again, I think it's a need that has been long overdue, and the level of care that we're going to see is one that hasn't been seen yet, and it's, it's going to be amazing. That was your vision eight years ago, and as of two days ago, yes. boom, it's open. And touching upon what you were talking about, you know, always trying to reach for the next level. Yes. What's on the horizon now in your mind? Yes, yeah, so in my mind, the, the next step is to – bring subspecialists to our community that would provide continued clinical support for the patients that are graduates of the NICU and children that never saw a NICU in their life. Kids that have gastrointestinal disease or lung disease, genitourinary disease, psychiatric disease, mm -hmm. and th having 
pediatric subspecialists visit us on a regular basis that would provide clinical services that heretofore we have not had. Uh, when I was on staff at um, uh, Texas or at uh, Children's Medical Center in Dallas, rather, I met a, a fellow named Pennick Laird. And when I moved here almost 29 years ago, shortly after the clinic began to get busy about a year or two into my practice, I asked that he come down on a periodic basis because we had enough heart patients, pediatric yeah. heart patients. He's been coming for, I think, more than 25 years now. To have that kind of a presence for all the other medical subspecialties, because the NICU will grow that business, would provide the same level of incredible care, again, in our backyard, without the hassle of having to travel and do Houston traffic, take a day off work, mm -hmm. a day off of school or daycare, to be able to actually go in, get visited uh, or be seen, and then um, bring your kid back to school or daycare or whatever, and you go back to work, and, and knowing that you just received the highest level of care that is uh, available from coast to coast uh, would be incredible. And so that's the next vision is to develop, to develop uh, a multi- clinic system with all the subspecialists present. And sometimes how I banter with you and sometimes even uh, have fun at your expense, I would never bet against you in something like that. So I can't wait to see that be to come to fruition someday. Anything else that you wanted to pass along this morning about uh, just you in general, about NICU? Uh, the, the NICU. NICU. The, NICU. That's what NICU. it is. NICU. NICU. I pronounce it NICU. I think most people say NICU. Uh, but Danny, we're going to let you say NICU. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would just like to thank the administrations for uh, at uh, CHI and at Textron's Hospital for uh, for coming and uh -huh. for and for developing uh, a solution, deploying that solution, and creating the opportunity to help and treat the kids, the young kids that have yet to be born, for the next several years, decades, hopefully, in the Lufkin and surrounding areas. This will be a service that will be tough to beat. And mm. so my hat is off to both systems for for making this a reality. And I would ask, trust me, we need to get the clinical subspecialists here as well. And so if we could work on that now, that would be great. And we'll think of the next thing as it comes. All right. Very good. Thank you so much for taking part of your time out today, Dr. George Fadone. Appreciate you very much. Thank you very much.